The movie begins with Jake Sully waking up from six years of sleep with several other passengers traveling to Pandora. Before he take on this mission, someone from the government comes up to him one day and says that his twin brother, Tom has been assassinated. The news breaks Jake's heart, but the authorities want to hire him to finish the work his brother hasn't finished. It turned out that Tom intended to investigate a newly discovered planet known as Pandora, which appears to support life similar to Earth. Jake gives the idea some thought for a while, but when the officials say that he will be paid millions, he immediately agrees. Because he and his sibling have a perfect genetic match, Jake was given this unique opportunity. In the following sense, a shuttle transports Jake and the crew to Pandora. Due to the planet's toxic atmosphere, everyone is instructed to wear full-face respirators, in just 4 minutes, they will die from exposure of just 20 seconds. Jake immediately enters a military briefing upon landing on the enigmatic planet, where Colonel Miles Guarge is speaking to the assembled soldiers and several civilians. He tells them about the Navi, the natives of Pandora, and that if they want to survive here, they must follow the law. Later on, Jake goes to a research facility, where he meets Norm Spellman, a biologist. She shows him his own programmed avatar for the first time. It is then made sense of that in the event that a human interfaces with their symbol which is a genetically modified Navi hybrid that can act like the Navi sim blend into Pandora. Dr. Grace Augustine, the program's science lead, wakes up in a specially designed pod that connects her and her avatar, as Jake and Norm enter the science department. She storms out of the room when Norm tries to introduce her to Jake. Parker Selfridge, a representative of the Resources Department Administration, RDA, and the base commander are the next people Grace confronts. All military personnel and other employees stationed at the colony are under the control of RDA, a company. She tries to persuade Parker that Jake is useless because he doesn't have legs and isn't a scientist. Park, on the other hand, responds that Jake is the only person with identical genetics to his brother, Tom, which is necessary for activating his avatar. Jake and Norm are connected to their avatars in the lab the following morning, in a separate room. Jake's avatar awakens shortly thereafter. He is now able to walk around and move his legs, something he hasn't done in years. He runs to the recreation area, where a number of other avatars are having fun and playing sports, in spite of his doctor's orders. Later, when Jake's avatar goes to sleep, the connection breaks, and he wakes up as a human. The next step is to meet the colonel and have a conversation with him. The colonel finally reveals the truth to Jake when he inquires about the true purpose of their visit to this planet. Unobtainium, a rare rock found in Pandora, is said to be worth billions of dollars on Earth. Within the community where the Navi people live, the best and largest unobtainity in rocks can be found. However, Jake will have to persuade them to leave because they won't see their land taken over by humans. Jake has three months to perfectly blend in with the Navi people and convince them to find a new home, according to the colonel. Jake will receive new legs if the mission is successful. However, if the Navi people continue to refuse to move after three months, a military team will be sent out, likely to wipe out the entire race. Jake and Grace, Norm, and a few others fly over Pandora's surface the following day after connecting with his avatar. They arrive at a location quickly and begin collecting samples of the flora. But Jake, who hasn't seen anything like this before, gets lost and ends up in a flower field. Just at that moment, a strange animal with the appearance of a panther, the Thanator, comes from behind, pursues Jake, isolating him from his companions. He is fortunate that he is able to save himself by diving into a waterfall while the Thanator is roaring above him. Jake's crew spends some time looking for him, but when it gets dark, they quickly leave. Jake is seen sharpening a long stick into a spear at night, having lost all of his weapons. During this time, a female Navi is looking down on him from above. When a baffling, glowing beam lands on her bow, she stops herself from shooting him. Jake is attacked simultaneously by a group of viper wolves. He appears to be doomed this time, but the female Navi unexpectedly comes to his aid and drives the wolves away. Jake, on the other hand, is not to her liking, so she tells him to go back to where he belongs. After that, she gets ready to go, but Jake starts following her. Additionally, he asks that she instruct him in survival skills. The Navi initially refuses to assist Jake, but when a number of the enigmatic glowing beings from earlier land on his body, she is impressed and takes him to Oamadakayan, where she lives. She also says her name is Natiri. However, as soon as they reach the specified location, the Navi people turn hostile toward the outsider. 
Nadiri, in particular, stops him and takes Jake to her parents, who are also the king and queen of the tribe. Jake informs them that he is a fighter, and that his objective is to acquire a knowledge of their customs and culture. The queen pricks his chest, and leaks his blood when she hears this. She then asks Nateri to be his teacher, and assist him after deducing that he has a pure spirit. Jake is taken to his bed, which encircles him like a cocoon, after a ritual gathering. Human Jake is resurrected from the chamber as he drifts off to sleep. He tells all the scientists, including Grace, about his unbelievable experience the following morning. However, the colonel reminds him once more that he only has three months to finish his mission. In the next sense, Human Jake is describing his experience through a video log that he keeps after each day's activities. He discusses his avatar's busy training schedule with Nateri. She asks him, to select a strange looking scout, as his ride one day. He is initially, skeptical about the concept, but he chooses one, and attaches his neural cue to its antenna, after insisting a lot. He then learns how to steer the scout, and enjoys riding it. Human Jake later informs Parker and the Colonel about the Navi resistance, the enormous home tree, and a significant unobtainium deposit beneath it. Jake asks for permission to negotiate with the Navi, and persuade them to leave, despite the Colonel seeing an opportunity to destroy the tree. Grace moves Jake to the Hallelujah Mountains, a remote area, with enormous floating islands that are sacred to the Navi, after learning that Jake is being manipulated. It turns out that she has no interest in the unobtainium rocks, and is only there to investigate the planet. A Tork, a brightly colored flying mountain monster, that despises flying things, unexpectedly pursues Jake and Nateri, as they are flying on their, scams, one day. Fortunately, they are able to escape to the home tree, where Jake is shown the remains of the former, Tork, by Nateri. She reveals that her great-grandfather, rode, a Tork, as the last person to do so, in order to unite the five Navi tribes during a difficult time. Nateri adds that, no one has attempted to ride a, Tork, in decades. The Navi tribe started to accept Jake, as one of their own over time, and they even held a ceremony, to honor him. Nateri, takes them to a place of prayer after the ceremony, where they use a nerve ending, at the end of their long hair to connect with the tree. He learns from Nateri, that he can now choose a woman to be his wife. After some reflection, Jake declares that he wants to marry her. Nateri accepts the proposal and the two of them kiss, despite her evident shock. Then, the newlyweds, spend the night together under the tree and, Jake regains consciousness in the lab, Nateri, wakes up in the morning, to the sound of falling trees, and the sight of numerous bulldozers, destroying the area. She tries her best to drag Jake to safety, after she realizes that they are being attacked. At the same time, Jake is getting ready to connect with his avatar, at their remote location. When he finally comes back to life, he gets on one of the bulldozers, and tries to stop it. He smashes its camera system when nothing works, forcing the soldiers to fire at him. Jake is fortunate to be able to get away and reach the home tree. The avatar, who attempted to derail their mission, is identified as Jake, by the colonel after watching the surveillance tape back at the base. He then enters a room, enraged to search for Jake and Grace, while the bulldozers continue to demolish Omadakaya's sacred site. Under the home tree, the Navi scatter, to resolve to fight the invaders. Jake and Grace attempt to prevent them, from doing so and protest against it. Nevertheless, the warrior, Sute, even though he is engaged to Nateri, tries to kill Jake, because he knows that Jake and Nateri are married for life. The colonel abruptly, severes the links that link Grace and Jake's avatars to their human forms, as the situation escalates, causing them both to become unconscious. In the following scene, an irate Grace confronts the RDA, and military commanders, and reveals that the Navi can access a network made of Pandora's trees, with more neurological connections than the human brain. The Navis will never leave their home, the home tree, according to her and Jake. After hearing this, the colonel makes a decision to invade the home tree, and drive the Navis away with gas bombs. Jake begs the base commander, Parker, so that he can use his avatar to persuade the Navis to leave. Parker agrees, but he warns Jake that he only has one hour to accomplish his goal. He admits that he is one of the humans, and informs the Navis that they are being invaded, by humans once he is back among them. Jake is pushed by Nateri, for betraying her trust when she hears this. Jake and Grace are taken hostage, by the other Navis, who are also devastated. 
they then get ready to fight the humans, who have arrived in a slew of flying ships, and they prepare to do so. The war then breaks out, the navvies try their best, but the heavy artillery of the humans, is too much for their bows and arrows to handle. Sadly, the home tree is eventually destroyed by multiple explosions, killing several navvies along the way. The queen, unexpectedly, returns to the captive humans, and releases them during the chaos. After that, she begs them to save their clan. Jake quickly approaches Neytiri, and tries unsuccessfully to console her. Neytiri's father, is killed in the attack, and as he passes away, he begs her to take his sacred bow, and lead his people. Jake and Grace suddenly revert to human form, and they are arrested for treason right away. Norm is also found guilty of trying to prevent troops, from turning off their avatar forms. The remaining navvies, on the other hand, reunite at the Tree of Souls. Jake and his friends are secretly released, by their team pilot, Trudy, back at the base. After that, they leave in her spacecraft, and try to get to the navvies. Sadly, the evil colonel spots them, and fires at the spacecraft as they travel. Grace appears to be bleeding out due to her severe injuries. The group reaches the floating mountains after some time, where Jake jumps into a pot, and wakes up as his avatar. He then makes a bold decision, to call on his scout, and set out to find the Toruk, knowing that the navvies will not accept him. Despite its simplicity, his plan could easily end in his death. After that, Jake jumps on the back of the Toruk, as he slowly approaches it from above. We then see him, riding the Toruk, to the Tree of Souls, during an Omotokai ritual. All of the navvies are shocked by this, and they finally accept his return with the utmost respect. Jake then asks the warrior, Tsute for help to fight against the human army, and the warrior agrees. Jake tries to save his dying friend Grace, with the help of the navvies, and even solicits assistance from the queen. Grace, on the other hand, succumbs to her injuries despite their best efforts. This stokes Jake's rage, and inspires the navvies to band together, to oust the human. They approach their rival clans at the end of the day, and gather approximately 2,000 additional navvies. In the meantime, the colonel turns his attention to the Tree of Souls, after spotting a large number of navvies. As a result, he gives his men orders, and moves toward the location. However, the navvies also show up, both on the ground, and in the air, to his surprise. While Tsute, and other warriors, are ready to give their lives, for their land, Jake is flying on his legendary Tornuk. Soon, a bloody battle breaks out, and bodies begin to pile upon both sides. This time, However, the scounds, cause the human artillery to gradually falter. Jake is being pursued, and shot by the colonel's dragonfly ship, amid all of this. Fortunately, Trudy gets there just in time to shoot the colonel, giving Jake enough time to run away. In contrast, an explosion also results in the deaths of Tsute, and Neytiri's, scout. Neytiri begins to panic, as she sees the devastation from the ground, a massive bomber ship, approaches the Tree of Souls, in the interim. A battalion of Titanitares, Pandora's heavily armored dinosaur-like animals, arrive and begin attacking the soldiers, as soon as the humans appear to have their way through the remaining forest. Neytiri, overjoyed, returns to the battle, with a large number of Pandora's species behind her. Surprisingly, a Thanator bows to her submissively when it appears nearby. Jake then raises his Toruk into the air, in order to meet the bomb ship, as the military's collective ground forces scatter in disarray. After that, he hits the ship with grenades, causing it to crash far from the Tree of Souls. The Colonel spacecraft is also hit by explosives from Jake, but he escapes in an AMP suit before it catches fire and explodes. The Colonel's, however, finds himself at Grace's temporary camp. While he tries to disable Jake's avatar bot, the Thanator, Neytiri, had linked to, attacks him. He kills it with his suit and Trappy, Neytiri under it. Jake, however, arrives at the scene in his avatar before the colonel has a chance to kill her. After that, the two of them start fighting, but in the end, the colonel gains control over him. Neytiri gets up and shoots an arrow at the colonel, impaling him in the chest, just as he is about to kill Jake. She fires a second arrow immediately, killing the colonel immediately. However, he had already caused enough damage to Jake's pod before he died. Because of this, Jake the human is awake, but he is having trouble breathing and trying to put on a mask. Neytiri, shows up, which is a good thing, and helps him get his mask. 
She then gives human Jake a first look at his real body by cradling him. When Jake signs his last video log in the final scene, he informs us that he has been selected to permanently transfer his consciousness to his avatar. In the film's final scene, Neytiri, watches over Jake as he wakes up in his avatar form. This is where the movie ends. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos.